So today I'm out here weeding underneath my blackberry plants and I am about six and a half, almost seven months pregnant. So gardening is one of my absolute favorite hobbies. Um, I have a 7,000 square foot food forest and a backyard garden, which is soon to be a very large um, 2,000, 2,500 square foot garden when we move into the new house. And so I wasn't just ready to give up on gardening altogether when I got pregnant. Um, I did a lot of research and I spoke with my ob um, to make sure that gardening could still be safe during this time of my life. Now, I wanna put a medical disclosure here. I am not a doctor in any way, shape or form. Um, so of course, speak to your ob um, and do your own research before you start gardening or pulling weeds or any of that sort of thing while pregnant. So one of the major concerns with gardening and pulling weeds while pregnant is a parasite known as toxoplasmosis. Um, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I will put it on the screen here somewhere. Um, but basically it's a parasite that lives in the soil and can have a lot of symptoms for you that can be passed on to the baby, leaving potentially long-term effects. Now, this parasite is usually found in cat feces and makes its way into your garden if there are any cats in the vicinity. Now, even if you don't have cats, there could be cats in your neighborhood that find their way into the garden um, and cats are known to defecate in garden beds. So that is where the major concern comes from. However, in doing a lot of my research, I did find that if you have um, been around cats in any form prior to pregnancy, there's a good chance that you're actually immune to toxoplasmosis or really that you have the parasite right already in your system so you're not going to contract something harmful um, during pregnancy. Now, of course, do your own research on this, but I will link to the research that I have found um, that really put my mind at ease because as you guys know, if you watch this channel at all, I love animals, um, including cats, and I have had tons of cats over the years. Um, so that is not something super high on my priority list. However, if that is one of your concerns, a good pair of garden gloves, right, with like these little rubberized edges on them or the backs on them that are rubberized, um, which prevent stuff from getting onto your hands, that could be a really good garden companion during pregnancy. Now the second main concern is using pesticides while pregnant. And according to the CDC, pesticides have been linked to miscarriage or birth defects in the long run. Now, if you don't garden organically already, then now is a great time to switch to organic gardening using a lot of permaculture methods um, because you don't want all of those chemicals in your body um, normally, especially when you know that they can be passed through onto the developing baby. Now, this is one thing I like to use in my garden um, that is 100% all organic. It is a neem oil spray, right? So you can see it in there. Um, it's a concoction of neem oil and water, um, plus a tiny bit of soap, which is why it kind of looks that milky white in here. Um, but really, I like to use this to control pests in my garden, not necessarily for weeding. But later on in the video, I actually have a great tip that I share with you guys as far as weeds um, during pregnancy and a way to prevent having to pull weeds at all. Now, the last major concern for pulling weeds while pregnant is the fact that you just may not even know what some of these things are, right? I see some weeds I identify, but I see some things that I'm really not familiar with what it looks like. I know that this is under my blackberry patch and I have my blackberries right there, all right? And I've already done some weeding on this side. You can see this is what my blackberry plants look like, right? But all the stuff underneath it, I wasn't exactly sure what it could be. It looked a lot like this when I started weeding. So some of these plants may or may not be dangerous or poisonous or anything like that, but um, there's a, a chance that they, they can be, right? And if you don't know what it is, you may not know what the effects are on your body um, and potentially on the baby and how sick it's going to make you and all of that kind of stuff. So it's just better to avoid any sort of handling unidentifiable plants. Um, I will tell you, I had a pretty good run in with this a few weeks back um, where we I was working on the property, getting rid of all the vines along the deer fencing that we have here in the garden. Um, and I did not use gloves and I didn't use long sleeves and I was basically completely unprotected. Everything I should not have been doing. Um, and I ended up with a huge rash all over my body. All right. I did a lot of research on what we have in this area and what, you know, cross identifying with the leaves that I saw on the property and coming back out here and trying to identify things. Um, but basically I had some like poison sumac slash poison oak kind of thing going on. All right. 
Now, this isn't dangerous for the baby in my particular case, um, after consulting my OB guide and a lot of Google research. However, you know, I don't know what other types of plants could potentially be um, more dangerous. So thankfully, um, it was just uncomfortable for me um, and I was able to remedy the situation with a topical Benadryl cream um, which is safe during pregnancy in case you discover this issue the hard way um, but really it's just safer to avoid things like that altogether. That being said I have put together a list of tips that you can use to stay safe and comfortable while you're working on the garden and pulling weeds while you're pregnant. Starting with staying hydrated all right now you can hear in here i have my ice water um, i carry this around with me usually all the time anyway um, especially now that i'm pregnant i find myself refilling it a lot but i personally tend to get much hotter um, during pregnancy than before i was pregnant so i am constantly drinking water i make sure that i have this um, at all times and as soon as it gets low or empty i am sure to refill it because there's nothing like being extraordinarily hot um, out in the garden and not having anything to cool you off now my next tip would be to avoid chemicals all right and switch to permaculture gardening and organic methods as you can see here there are a lot of plants in this space but most of them are not weeds most of them are actually live mulch in the form of these absolutely gorgeous marigolds which i have growing everywhere and i have a lot of herbs that i know are safe for pregnancy and other things that are just covering the soil by doing this just making sure i have the soil covered it does not leave a lot of room for weeds you can tell there's hardly any weeds in here all right i have some spearmint in here i have tons of marigolds um, i have some of my flowers in here, um, my milkweed for my butterflies, which if I get a close up for you guys, is just so pretty and is always covered with monarch butterflies. All right, but there's not a ton of room left for weeds, which makes it so much better because I hardly ever have to weed this specific garden bed. Now I know that gardening organically is easier said than done, all right? If you're not using chemicals, then how are you protecting your plants? Um, and really you are using mother nature um, and a good set of tools to work with the environment and make sure that your plants are not being overrun with pests and disease and all of that. Um, using a cover crop or a live mulch um, is a really good way to prevent having to pull weeds um, and it's actually what I'm doing in this area with my blackberries. All right. So this area that I've already weeded, the main purpose of weeding it is so that I could put down my parsley seeds and have tons of parsley at the same time as not having to pull out any weeds in the future. Okay, so on my way to show you guys my next tip, I'm going to give you another one, um, which is to, as you can see, it is not scorching hot outside right now. Um, it's to garden when it's not the middle of the day, basically, all right? so. Right now the sun is about right in front of me, all right, but it is not 100% overhead. Um, it is almost behind the house here and it is about 6 o'clock, um, I think almost 6.30 now, um, and the sun is going down or it's at least starting to go down. Much earlier in the afternoon when I was out here um, at about midday, one o'clock or so it was scorching hot all right you couldn't even be outside for a couple of minutes let alone take an hour or two to weed the garden all right but right now it is actually pleasant outside even in central florida where i am um sort of in the middle of end of summer beginning of fall all right and it's still manageable so either try to get out here first thing in the morning right after sunrise or try to get out right before sunset um that will significantly help to reduce you know the potential of overheating or overworking yourself because um, there's just a much cooler environment outside for you and that brings me to my next tip for you guys which is to take lots of breaks now i am somebody who is not used to taking breaks at all in any sense of the word um, and that has had to change now that i am pregnant i find myself taking breaks with everything but especially while i'm working with the garden because it gets super hot out even in the beginning and ends of the day when you know i've been out here for a while and I just find myself needing to take breaks a lot more often to prevent my back from hurting or to prevent myself from getting overheated. Now, I know that this one is much easier said than done, especially if you're somebody like me who gets in the, the mind frame and then you're just like in the zone and you wanna go, go, go. Um, but 
I have found that when I don't take a break in between or when I don't listen to my body, um, I end up regretting it in the long run because my entire body aches and then I just wish I hadn't have been in the garden at all. Now, one of the best things I can tell you is to invest in a good set of tools for gardening to help you out, especially while you're pregnant because things get difficult fast when you're bending over and not having the proper tools. The first tool that is extraordinarily helpful in weeding and gardening um, is a hori hori knife. Now, I have had this for about a year and a half now. A friend got it for me. Um, and at first I didn't really see the, you know, all the uproar with hori hori knives. This tool is so versatile. It can be used for so many things, um, but it really, the main thing I use it for is digging holes and cutting out weeds, all right? Because this side has a flat edge, all right? It is um, quite sharp here. And then the other side actually has this like serrated knife kind of thing going on here, all right? Which makes it perfect for just cutting through all of those thick weeds. And of course the tip is perfect for digging um, and getting all those weeds out. And it's kind of like curved. I don't know if you can see this here, but it is somewhat curved um, in like a shovel type thing. So it's really great for weeding. Um, and it has been one of the things that I use often now. Um, and it's just been a lifesaver. Now the second one, believe it or not, is just a simple pair of scissors. This one you can tell Milo kind of got a hold of it a little bit here and it has been well used. Um, but these are just a pair of garden scissors, or actually they're just regular scissors. Um, I think they're actually, yeah, they're KitchenAid scissors. All right, and I use them. I have the exact same pair in my kitchen. I use them all the time. Um, and I just took them and now they live in my garden bag. Um, but I replace them with the exact same pair for the kitchen. So I use these for cutting out little things um, if I don't want to have to dig or if it's something that can just kind of like be cut out at the roots, I use this quite a bit. Um, followed by these little shears here, all right? Um, and these are basically for getting out like bigger weeds and, you know, cutting um, branches and things like that. Um, but for pruning mostly, this is what I use these for. Now, the last one that I have come to discover recently, and I like it, um, I don't use it all the time, but I use it often enough now where I think it's worth mentioning is this like, I think it's called a scuttle hoe or a scuffle saddle hoe, something like that. Um, I think it has a few different names that I saw. I will leave it here somewhere um, as well as the link in the description. But this basically, um, it has like a long pole and you can extend it um, or condense it depending on what you need. Um, and for the weeds that I don't want to have to like bend over to reach or anything that's in like the corner of my garden, um, which would make it like I have to crawl under fencing or something like that. I use this quite a bit um, and it has been really good in just, you know, the shallower weeds that you can just scrape out with this tool. All right, so those are some of my best gardening tips um, for gardening while pregnant and really helping yourself to stay cool, hydrated, and most importantly, safe um, while gardening and pulling weeds during this time of your life. Um, it has really, these things have really helped me in still maintaining a healthy garden hobby while I'm pregnant. If you wanna check out some of my other gardening videos, I will leave that gardening playlist here somewhere on the screen. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.